Right, so. What are we doing? I wanted to see if we see this log line. Uh, worth noting that we do hard code the content type as MP4 here. So this is an MP4, and we're not filtering things out to check that it is MP4, I think. Oh. Oh. Or are, well, we aren't doing that, but we are. I see, like, these continues should stand out, right? We're looking for a video stream and an audio stream. So the video I put in did not have audio. And um, I, I thought that was the guess, right? And uh, so yeah, that would break this. Now, what I should do instead is something. Um, I mean, I'm gonna change this around. So we're gonna... Um, I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna take this bit here and move it into here. And then also grab this here. Yeah. And this actually is audio stream count and audio uh, sample rate. something wrong here. Match audio stream. It's this. We don't need to do this. We just need to do... Oh yeah, it should just be dot count, right? Uh, FF probe stream is not an iterator. Okay. Confused. Matching audio stream. Probe streams iter find where the codec type is audio. Well, let me unwind a little bit. I've forgotten how it originally was. I, I feel like I copied the wrong thing. How is this different? Streams that are fine. calling filter and this is calling find I see um, so this just finds the first one and asks for the count I see okay so let's change this to filter so that I get a set uh, an iterator and then um, this around okay yeah 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 so th this can stay the same and then what I want to do is I want to have audio stream sample rate 
that I'll calculate by attempting to get the first one and getting the rate or at zero. So what's the problem here? Uh, audio stream count is a use. Oh, it's just out of date. There we go. Okay. So that gets rid of some of the continues. I think it's reasonable that if the file does not have a video stream, we'll skip it. Um, but hey, I didn't even need to check. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of this trace actually. I don't, I don't think we need that. Uh, and we'll rebuild again. All right, so this should fix the issue that was impeding my ability to test uh, an unrelated thing. And why is there something red? Um, yeah. Stream sample rate. It's an option. Missing, uh... Okay, so this is, if we fail to read the sample rate, it should default to zero. If we fail to find any audio um, channels or streams in the, in the container file format, them default it to zero. Um, and then by calling next, we just read the first one from the, the iterator, I think. Advance the iterator returns the next value. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you create iterator, Hitter.next gives you the first value. Okay. Uh, it's interesting though. So the, it is an option U32. So I wonder if we could just get rid of the unwrap or. And then, oh wait, wait, no, no, sorry. That's the audio stream count is the, uh, Why is that optional? Uh, also, that's not right. Uh, audio bit, bit rate is U32. I guess these all should be optional. Um, okay, so yeah, get rid of that. There we go, all right. It's fixed. Let's try building again. Yeah, so this will allow me to se select the uh, test video file. some warnings but it's fine so we'll be able to uh, select the test video file and we'll be able to try to upload it to YouTube uh, a pro <laughs> I'm doing it this way is the video file is fairly small compared to like a normal normal a normal hour-long episode um, so Things are restarting, that's all. There we go. All right, so I click browse. There we go. Choose, I choose you. Save. 
All right. And because we've associated this episode with um, a series, a test series, which has a playlist, this should, if I go back to episodes, it's like test episode. I click uh, while I log in with YouTube. I, I do have an outstanding task in the backlog to um, make it so that if you try to do an upload and it fails because you're stale authentication credentials, um, like it prompts you in the UI and uh, it doesn't just completely fail, which is currently what happens now. Like if, uh, like if I click this now, this is going to fail. There we go. And we got an actual failure this time. So that's fixed, right? So before this would show test status is now failed and then it would say complete and this would always show complete. So that's nice. That, that works as expected. I'll log in with YouTube. Another feature um, that I did at one point, I, I think I talked about it briefly, but I made it so this opens in a, oops. <laughs> Don't make that gesture. Uh, all of my windows got minimized, which is super unhelpful. I can't see OBS anymore. Uh, let's see, hold on. At least OBS hides itself. Okay, so anyway, um, right. So I made it so this pops up, so and it get, it takes me to a uh, like a landing page where I can click proceed, uh, which is nice. All right, so I'm gonna log in with one of my Google Google accounts and uh, continue. All right, logged in, checks out. Uh, and then if I click upload to YouTube, upload. So we have upload test episode to YouTube. It's processing. We will get a, uh, a push status down here in the, the bottom right. Uh, once the upload completes, which shouldn't take that long. It's uh, only like 15 megs or something. And then uh, I wonder if the UI will update here. I think not. I don't think I made it so that the like WebSocket stuff will cause this to refresh. So I would have to click the refresh button. So if I go over here to content, and I do uh, an actual refresh of this page. You should see test episode. There we go. Uh, at some point we should see this be completed and then a new task appear. Well, we'll see the push notifications thing stuff is happening. I'll be able to click refresh and we'll see a new task appears that will be add video to playlist. Um, and then here we go. Task 66 is now complete. And then add video to playlist failed. So that's pretty interesting. All right, so we have test episode. Um, and it's not associated to a playlist. Like I can manually associate it to a playlist, but I'm not going to. Yeah, task 67 has now failed. 67. Uh, so there we go. So progress. <laughs> so why did this fail is the question. Maybe we can answer. Okay, so. Oh, this arrow looks familiar. I think we saw this last time around. Failed to parse previous task ID invalid digit found in string. Right, so in, oh, that's in get list handler. Okay, so this these are logs from when we're trying to list the tasks in the front end. We couldn't parse previous task ID invalid digit found in string. Maybe let's look in um, Redis. What the data looks like. So that was task 67, task 67, okay, task item 67, so 
So this is the thing that is put in to represent the task. And we can see previous task ID was 66. Um, I wonder if, I mean, this error might be from one of the other tasks, not the current one. I think one thing I want to do though, help me in debugging, is um, log what the ID that it failed to parse was. was yeah, like that. At least that way we'll be able to see <laughs> what it failed to parse. Um, we'll figure out a new build. I'll be just keep looking. I, I don't think that's the issue though. Um, what I would like to see is what was the what was the payload that was sent to the playlist upload endpoint? Um, and I think we'll have to, so here's YouTube upload task, finish processing uh, request, right? So this is, this is the endpoint that was called to actually upload the video. And then we have a bunch of events from our, our, our WebSocket stuff, right? Where we're like, okay, so new status is complete. Previous was queued. That doesn't seem right. Previous status should have been processing. Okay, well anyway, so now we have new status processing, previous stat status queued for our playlist upload, right? And we can see um, the data that it read from Redis, right? So ID 67, the key is this, last updated. Next task, null, right? There is not a next task after we upload. Well, currently, there's not a next task. Um, the payload that we have in Redis has this previous task data key as playlist ID, which should be our playlist ID, playlist position, which should be zero. I think uh, previous task ID run after status processing. And then here we go. So here's the request to YouTube playlist add task. And the failure was video ID not found. So here's the body to, uh, to this. And the, the key thing here is this previous task data is an empty array. Now, what should be happening between here and here is the task worker should be doing things. All right, so when we, let's, let's hide all the error handling stuff. Um, when we build the request to the task URL, so if we look at the, the record here, the task URL is YouTube playlist add task right there. And can I, can I make this bigger? I can, all right. Might be a little easier to see, there we go. YouTube playlist add task. Um, so it, posts to that URL, the result of calling build task payload. Build task payload um, asks Redis to get the task data for previous task ID. So task that previous task ID is, uh, is optional, but we know it's there. Like we can see previous task ID was 66. Um, and we so so we call get task data that's in data and we take that vector of value and we set that to we put that into data right 
and then we say payload previous task data is JSON JSONify data. So it should be a string. Um, and this previous task data should be deserialized in the um, the handler in API src handlers here uh, youtube.rs there we go so in our endpoint add to playlist task handler the body should be a YouTube playlist add task payload. And what should be happening is we should be looking for previous task data at this key. That, that's my understanding of how this should work. Now, maybe I'm wrong. In fact, given that this is not working, I'm probably wrong. test that this works. Here's something I, I don't think I do a lot here. Tests. Can we give it instructions? Check that uh, it. And uh, let's just do slash tests. Let's see what it does for us. I don't like like it looks like it just replaces Oh, it's still writing. And what does this have to do with that struct? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. seems to be idiomatic in Rust. I mean, I guess you can you can put tests in a different file, but also you can put tests in in line in the file. Um, what does that look like? What does that look like? I think somewhere I have Oh, it's probably a different browser window. Let's do the, um, uh, yeah, here we go. Rustling docs. Um, I don't, I don't know if this is what I was really looking for, but we'll, we'll start here. Um, have so about tests. Oops. Control W. <laughs> Test. There we go. How to write tests. Test organization. Tests module and config test. Here's a question. Yeah. So if you wanted to um, like have all of your tests in the file at the bottom, you do something like this. Can you declare the same module multiple times? Is that something people do? Like imagine you, so, so one thing may be, maybe there's just too much going on in this file. Might be a thought, um, but otherwise, could you, you know, Look like C G test. Interesting. It really wants to test, you know, 
lots of things, but I really don't want to test lots of things. Oops, test. Um, let's do test uh, YouTube playlist. Test payload serialization. Uh, deserialization is really the, the part that I care about. So let me let me try to answer my own question here, right? So if I do this, okay, I can't do that. I cannot define the same module multiple times. It's not like um, maybe like TypeScript with like namespaces where they like merge together. So that seems to indicate that if you want to do inline tests like this, you probably want to put this maybe at the bottom. So let's see if Copilot can write us a test. No, it's already given up. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we have a payload, and then we are attempting to um, use Surdy JSON to parse the payload, and then we're going to make some assertions about it. So if I run this test. If this even works, piling. Uh, this should not be uh, an every time. I care about the, the concepts of individual values like playlist ID and well, position just needs to be a number. Um, so this should be this should be a good test, right? This tells us whether or not the previous task payload, uh, task data um, element member, uh, whatever is. Uh, attribute on task payload is being read from at previous task data, which is the thing I want to know. Uh, and presumably, but we could test the other way. So that seems to have worked one past. So what about the other direction? Let's see if it can uh, guess that I want to go yeah, serialize. my inattentiveness. I left something and then misdirected it. All right, so task payload, we're going to build the struct directly, and then we're going to try to serialize it, and then we're going to assert the JSON looks a certain way. This yeah. is not great um, because I don't know that sturdy JSON guarantees order of keys when it serializes things. Um, definitely in other cases, this is something that is uh, kind of fragile. So hopefully this is faster. Uh, okay, one test passed. So that, that seems to like work, like you can, you know, handle that. So where have things gone wrong? And I'm gonna keep these tests, why not, right? Just kind of uh, double checking um, if this works this way. Do I actually want to, right? I mean, generally, right, the point of like 
writing a test like this is like now you're gonna check that this works but really this is me getting confidence in my understanding of how Surdy works and this is really testing Surdy rather than my code um so I don't know that I want to keep these tests actually I don't think so. Like we, we can see that this works and because the functionality in question, like the code that's actually doing the work is in a, a external library. I'm not gonna add tests about that here, but it's good, you know, just to like sanity check that my understanding of what rename doing is, what rename is doing is correct. So if that's not the problem, what's the problem? Uh, okay. so. Again, we're calling build task payload. We are grabbing this data. We're putting it into this payload. It is, I guess one possibility is this doesn't match the, um, no, it's, it's the same thing there, right? They're exactly the same. And we return payload. Um, I could add a tracing here, checking that we're getting the data, and that looks right. So I do like tracing bug. Now verify that the payload that we're we're returning back for the task worker to send to the API. Looks the way we expect. That's probably a good thing to check. What else? rs where we're accepting the payload where we're accepting the payload um, as body so this is where we're tracing that we didn't find the video ID That implies that first return to none, right? And then, which you know, implies that the previous test data is empty. Um, I don't know that there's a way to see, like inside this handler, to see what the raw request was. But we've already established that if there's an attribute at previous task data, that'll get parsed and put it into this key. That suggests that the issue is in the task worker not putting it there or in it not getting the data. What is the get task data doing? It takes a record ID and uh, the Redis connection. It calculates the data key from the record ID, right? So if we look at Redis, we have previous task ID is 66. So there, sh there should be a task data 66 there, and it has a single element in it. Um, So where we're calling this, well, we'll see. Uh, let, let me go ahead and kick off a build because what we'll see is we'll see that in the payload. We'll see previous test data in the payload if that worked. Now 
here's a question. Do we do we need this JSON um, macro here? Like build build task payload is being called over here. And it returns a sturdy JSON value. Can we? Can you just do this? Maybe not because this is a vec. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if it's suggestion here, copilot suggestion of into auto converts. It does. Right. So this this recognizes that this key needs to have a uh, asserted JSON value um, enum or type. And so this, the, the, this does the conversion. Is this better or worse than using the JSON macro? I don't know. I think this, this is equivalent though. Now, the fun thing is I made that change while the build was ongoing. Is this build going to have the line that was there before or this line? Um, so I might as well go back to the video here delete it uh, I could have probably deleted from the other screen but that's fine because we're just gonna test the whole process again once the build completes Meaning that uh, we don't use topic IDs. Uh, which I think very early on in the database design for this application, um, topics were going to be kind of like tag things that you'd have like a topics table and there would be like um, relationships from other kind of so so basically tagging for all sorts of things tie them together and I, I i think probably i just need to remove it all we do have tags but they are not they're just freeform ta text or maybe I'll, I'll go back the other way i don't know we'll see let's try uploading again let's see if our credential is still valid all right it's in progress So we gotta wait for the upload to complete. Which just ch take a minute or two, and then it will attempt to, uh, to call the next task to add the video to the playlist. And then we'll be able to see what the payload is that we are actually passing in the body of the request to the to our API that calls YouTube's API. Add a filter here by series. 
ja. You know, for you know, a just gets the job done. Uh, Backend admin interface. It's pretty good. I do have a new UI that I am working on specifically around reviewing all of the like analysis of like the um, so the the transcript, the speech to text, and the silence detection, and the um, some other data elements and like getting it all in one view and being able to review it and be able to like select edits and essentially building my own little video editor um, in uh, React and Tailwind. Um, and at some point, maybe I'll actually show some of that on stream, um, but that's gonna be part of a completely separate UI, not to do with that like admin interface, but um, more of like a workflow UI that uh, will be standalone from this. So then we'll have like a, a workflow view and then you can click through to like admin, like edit the records directly view uh, is the thinking. All right, so what happened? So at some point here, we should see the payload from the task worker. So here's where we see video ID not found. So it should be above this. Um, bug. Oh, right, it's not in here because it's the task worker itself. This is something that's happening just in the task worker. So one of the task workers uh, is in this one. I don't think so anyway. Response, got response JSON. No, what was the, what was the container? Task worker tail. What's this error? Failed to parse previous task ID and valid digit. Value is null. Okay, well, that makes sense. That's expected. Um, in fact, let's let's look at that really quick. Kind of a, a tangent. Um, okay. Can we? I don't think we can do this, can we? We can't do like. And I, I feel like I even did this on stream once before. Is that. Can we do that. Pretty sure this doesn't work anyway. Oh, we can't do that in, in that anyway. Uh, okay, I think what I want to do though is I want to say um, if I want to do this. Oh, you know what? We could we could we could do this even before we try parsing, right? Uh, if ID is the string null. Um, yeah, this 
yeah, we've, we've definitely been here before because um, the concern is like, you know, what if it has a space in it? It's still, nah, it's fine, whatever. It, it at least will stop these extra trace errors appearing that aren't really relevant to anything. Okay, so anyway, that was not the task worker I was looking for. Um, got response, adding previous task data to payload, right? But it's empty. Uh, this is yeah, right now, well, a couple minutes ago at this point, but it's empty. It is an empty array. That was, was this the thing that I, that I added? Is that the, the text? Um, that's payload. Added previous test data to payload, and then we echo, we output the payload. Added previous test data to payload. What on earth is going on? Well, I'm still recording, but the stream is down. We are super laggy. Yeah. Start streaming. Start the stream. Be back. You might be back. Okay. Well, that is a thing that happened. It was one of those I probably need to. Yeah, looks like we're back. Sorry for the interruption. I think, um, huh, why is, okay, microphone is on, but the preview is not, mm. technical difficulties. Uh, okay, well, what is going on with the computer today? Complete task manager. Not a persistent issue. I'm trying to see. I might be trying to use my GPU right now. Besides OBS. All right, well. Hopefully we don't crash again. Um, so we, we've definitely established that the issue is that the data here is empty. I'm not sure why um, exactly. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some login to get task data, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take a quick break. It's been about an hour since the last. And um, I'm gonna, let, let's add some logging before I do. Let me just use the ads a little bit. Let's add some logging here. Um, so we're gonna add tracing. I don't know what call site is or why would I use it. 
get data from uh, get data list from key. Okay, so we'll log the key, and then want to probably just log the data we get back. Do that. Then. So what are we actually trying to do here? So we're getting a, a vector of strings and we're iterating and we're trying to parse each individual string. Um, well, what? Just to be really thorough. Parse this data is, is that. Okay, so I'm gonna trigger a build. I'm gonna take that break. I'll be back in just a couple of minutes and uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you. 